Hey Ryan here from My Fishing Cape Cod and in this video we are headed to Hydrographer Canyon which is located more than 100 miles south southeast of Cape Cod. Right now I'm fishing with Ted and Kurt Saracino and their friend Rob and all three are members of My Fishing Cape Cod. It was an awesome crew. We departed on July 17th, 2019, and currently right now we are headed south past the Nantucket Shoals. You can see right there, there are some shipping lanes out here, so if it's foggy, which it was for the ride home, it's definitely important to have radar. I would never head to the canyons without radar, that's for sure. Now the water temperature as we cruised to the west of the Nantucket Shoals was 56 degrees. However, once we got to the canyons, it would jump up to 77 degrees. That's the difference between the Gulf Stream waters and the very, very cold Nantucket Shoal waters. For the most part, we had reasonable conditions. It looks pretty calm right now. However, we would have three to five foot seas towards the end of the trip. The wind was blowing about 20, 25 miles per hour out of the southwest. So it was doable, but it was a little bumpy at times. So after a three and a half hour cruise, right now we are setting our spread at the west wall of Hydrographer Canyon. Kurt wants this on the long rigger. Oh yes. In this video you'll see a few of the lures and the spreader bars that we we're using. Carlson Tackle. These guys use Carlson Tackle quite a bit. Black Bart, that's another brand name that they run quite often in their spread. What I'll do is, in the description of this video, beneath this video I'll share some more links where you can get more detailed information about the exact spread that we are using. Clicker is on, yep. a little Sound while to get down. back into the hang of working the outriggers. All right, thank you for Essentially, the Essentially, they have three different setups on their outrigger where they can have a long outrigger, which we're setting right now, and, and this will put the bait so as far away from the boat as it. possible. Yeah. And then Good. there's gotcha. two other clips on there where you can have How far a medium back? range like and then a short range on the outrigger. As you just saw, they use elastic bands. When a fish hits, it's got to pull that elastic band right out of the outrigger, and it's got to go straight to the rod and reel. It's got to get tension there for the hook set, and you know, we'll be off to the races. As far as uh, drag pressure goes, where do you like to keep the drag? So, this is, that 
that would be um, right at strike. Pretty much right at strike, yeah. And you can see it's really tight, it's like 18 pounds. I back it off from there. Okay. I kind of feel it. Strong. A little back. A little bit that. less than strike. Yeah. And with regards to equipment for offshore fishing, the Goose Hummock and the MightyFish.com have all the spreader bars, all of the tackle gear, rods, reels, anything you need to outfit your boat for the canyons. The guys from the Goose Hummock in Orleans and over on the MightyFish.com have everything that you need. We had an incredible report from Captain Phil and the guys from the Goose Hummock. They were at Hydro the day before on July 16th and they caught dozens of yellowfin tuna, four big eyes, and I believe they also caught a blue marlin. So at this point in the trip we are just getting the spread out and that's always an exciting time because you never know when that first school of tuna or billfish has got to swim under the boat. When you're setting out these spreader bars, you want to make sure that you have the top of the spreader bar set on top. So for example, this spreader bar, I believe it actually says right on the, the bird there, it says top, and you want to lay it down that way, and that way it will ride to the top on the surface splashing around. If you have it flipped upside down, you're not going to get the correct action. Get it out on the short rigger or the medium one. This guy right here? Uh, actually, no, nope, would be that one there. Yeah. So we stagger all the lines again on the far so out rigger. The long outrigger, which is at the very tip of the outrigger yeah. there. The best way to do that is grab that it. That one is way, way back, probably at least 100 yards behind the boat. And every other line is staggered. And we have, I think, nine baits in the water. And the closest one is right off the stern. Trolling speed, we were going five to six miles per hour. And on this boat, they have autopilot. So we'll just set a course and it will just take us there at five to six miles per hour, which is perfect for trolling at the camp. That's good. Is that line okay? This one right here? Yeah, I think so. This bait right here, we run Today right we'll in the wash, wash, very close to the stern, and it's intended for wahoo. The amount of species out of the canyons is remarkable. Yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, big eye tuna, white marlin, blue marlin, wahoo. You know, the list just keeps going on and on. Now I'd say it's about 8 o'clock in the morning and we're making our way down to the east of Hydro. After trolling the west wall without any bites, we're headed to the east. We had a pod of whales go by and with that pod of whales were some yellowfin too.
right now we have two yellowfin tuna on the line. Initially we thought they might actually be big eye tuna, just based off of how hard they were pulling. But they ended up being yellowfins, and we had two fish on for several minutes, and actually the crimp on one of the lures on the spreader bar ended up breaking, so we would end up losing one of the fish. But as of right now, I think we still have two on the line. We got Rob and Kurt on the rods, and myself and Ted are just working like crazy to try to clear all the other lines before we get a massive tangle. And we would end up getting a pretty good tangle. When you have nine lines in the water, sometimes all nine get hit at once if the school of tuna is, is big enough. So you keep the boat going forward and you just do your best to try to clear the lines without getting stuff wrapped up in the engines and, and twisted and tangled up with the outriggers. This fish is real big. Right now Kurt is getting suited up with yep. A fighting belt and harness and all I'm doing in the foreground here is just trying to keep the line tight whenever you're fighting tuna the number one most important thing you can do is just making sure that line remains tight sometimes the tunas will flip around and swim right at the boat and you got to reel like crazy in order to take up the slack So you can see that lobster boat in the background. We caught this fish nearby the lobster boat and like I mentioned earlier, we had a pod of either very large dolphins or small whales swim right off the stern. And we feel for sure that these yellowfin tunas were traveling with those dolphins or with those small whales because as soon as they went by, we got bit. Down where I fish in Costa Rica when we're going for yellowfin tuna, the number one strategy is to find the porpoise. And if you find the porpoise or the dolphins, then there's a very good chance that there'll be yellowfin tuna with them. They feed together. So when fishing off Cape Cod, we're always looking for whales. We're looking for, obviously, birds, dolphins, porpoise, any sort of life. pretty surreal that we're able to take part in this canyon's fishery. To be able to travel a hundred miles out in the morning, fish for five or six hours, and then travel a hundred miles back home in the afternoon, and have everything done in time for dinner is, you know, pretty remarkable. I can only imagine what folks who used to fish off Cape Cod hundreds of years ago would think about us being able to do this right now in the course of one day. Sometimes we'll do an overnight trip to the canyons, but more than often over the last two years we've done these day trips where we'll leave at 2 in the morning and get back around 7 p.m. Sure. I'd be honored. You have a harpoon, Dad? No, that's 
So after a really nice fight, we're approaching the end game. I'm going to be getting the gaff ready momentarily here. With the gaff, it's always a little nerve wracking, but you want to go for the head of the tuna. Try to avoid the body meat, which is going to end up being, you know, beautiful quality sushi. So ideally, you don't want to gaff the fish right in the side. You want to go for the head. gentlemen well done nice boy he's pooped he was freaking big <laughs> awesome no, that's fish. a 70 pounder easy nice yellow yeah okay let's bleed him out and get the lines back in Carlson? Uh, no, Chatter. Pretty, pretty Chatter picture holding it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So as I mentioned hold earlier hold in this video, out. our friends from the oh, Goose Hummock, the day before, in the same spot, had caught yellowfin tuna all day long. They caught dozens of tuna, big eyes, yellows, and some billfish. However, that life had moved on. We've trolled for another four hours and no more bites. So we are very fortunate to get this fish and any time you catch a fish, uh, it's a good day. We we're hoping for more, but we are very lucky to get this one. On the way home, west of Nantucket Shoals, we encountered 50 miles of dense fog. So it was an interesting ride home, but we made it back safely. Yeah, it in the bag nicely. And as always, I appreciate you watching these videos. Hopefully you learned a little something new. Tight lines, take care, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.